Here's the here's the, the sweetest, most equally sour irony of all time. When Edward Bernays got back to America and realised that he could use propaganda to make money, to sell things, he realised it probably wasn't a good idea to call it propaganda because propaganda was associated with war, was associated with deception. So he had to call it something else. And he called it... D-A-N-G-E-R-F-I-E-L-D All right there, uh, yes, I've got a terrible sore throat. Um, I've been cranking out shorts for a commercial project and they pun it. YouTube are so terrified of TikTok. If you don't crank out three or four a day, you get, well, it's penalized, but I prefer to say punished, especially considering the uh, content I'm about to share with you. So it's gonna be a quick one, but I think you're gonna like it. And I know YouTubers say stay to the end, but stay to the end, because that's the denouement. That's the bit where you're gonna go, <laughs> right, 1904. <laughs> 1904. 1905, Sigmund Freud is smashing it. He's released the Interpretation of Dreams. It's become a bestseller. Um, we won't go into the details of the interpretation of dreams here. We're not going to go into Freud, really, but you know about psychoanalysis. You know the idea of an unconscious that, uh, and a conscious. We're conscious of some things we do. We're unconscious of other things we do. And I mean we do. Our unconscious affects our behaviours. We just don't know it. Other people see it, but we're, we're by definition, un we're not conscious of it. Right, so he's getting on and it's all good. Um... In 1914, the Aust Austrian-Hungarian uh, Empire take Europe into war. Freud sees this as kind of proving his point, really. Proving that these unconscious kind of animal instincts that have been left over from pre-civilization are making their way out. Theories that had later talk about in uh, Beyond the Pleasure Principle was Eros, love, and Thanatos, death. You know, it's, we, we're not just, we don't just live for goodness and happiness and love, we've also got a death drive. So it's kind of a con, there's a, there's a lot going on in the unconscious. He's got a grandson, Edward Bernays. Loads of you have probably gone, okay, this is about Eddie Bernays. Probably one of the most important people ever, who ever lived. Yeah, weird thing to say, but hear me out. So Eddie Bernays is working as like a, what would you call it, like a, a, a press officer in a local rag. But he's pretty good at it. And uh, when America, the USA, says it's going to get involved in the war, um, Woodrow Wilson gets hold of Eddie Bernays and says, I want you to come with me, I want you to... I want you to use your skills because Ed, although Eddie Bernays lived in America, he kept in contact with Sigmund Freud. He once sent him a box of cigars. Sometimes a box of cigars is just a box of penises. But um, Freud sends him back the introductory lectures to psychoanalysis and Bernays laps it up. And now Bernays is smashing it. Because what Bernays does when he's with Woodrow Wilson... Woodrow Wilson... <laughs> my speech impediments are brought to the surface with that. Woodrow Wilson... They're not going to try and re-establish the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, no. They're going to spread democracy all over Europe. And he gets Eddie Bernays to use his skills, which are essentially psychoanalysis, and none of this has ever been done before, um, to convince people, not only in Europe, but also back home in America, that this sort of spreading of democracy for a safer world, I think that was the exact phrase, it's something like that, um, spreading democracy for a safer world. And, and uh, basically, Edward Bernays uses propaganda psychoanalysis combined with techniques of persuasion to get the the masses to do what you want that's essentially it that's what propaganda is goebbels was a master of propaganda famously so as well 
weirdly more famous than Bernays, but Bernays was clever enough to sort of keep a lid on it. Now, at the end of the war, when Edward Bernays gets back to America and sort of sits like this, like you'd imagine him to, being a grandson of Freud, um, he thinks, well, hang on a minute. If I can use psychoanalysis for a mass persuasion in, in wartime to convince people to change their minds, to tap into things inside them, instincts that they don't even know about, to get them to do things that they don't know why, surely I can use that in peacetime as well. And he realises that the best thing to do would be to use it to sell things, <laughs> to get hold of some filthy lucre. And his first customer is, oh, what's his name? I think it's George Hill, who was the president of the American snout manufacturer. <laughs> that, that wasn't his real title. Something like that, American Tobacco Association. And he said to Edward Bernays, after seeing what he managed to perform in Europe, you know, you can imagine the likes of the president of the tobacco, you know, a big body like that, hanging out with the likes of Woodrow Wilson and Eddie Bernays. And so Edward Bernays says, all right, I'll, I'll take on the job. He says, as long as you let me get a psychoanalyst involved. And, you know, he doesn't give a shit. He just wants to sell more snouts. And what Edward Bernays realises, by looking at Freud, by looking at the introductory lecture, lectures, by looking at the interpretation of dreams, by looking at the idea of Eros and Thanos, they're not called that yet, but they're instinctual drives, remnants of the lizard brain, whatever you want to call it. And he, he works out, and you, you might, I know, I know, not because I'm psychic, because I've told this story a thousand times and I get this response, that... This is going to sound very crude, but the proof is in the pudding. Eddie Bernays realises, well, hang on a minute, most women don't smoke. It was a taboo for women to smoke, certainly in public. And if you could, if you could get women to smoke, in public especially, you're going to up your sales lows. Why, why try to get men to smoke more? Because in those days, men smoked as many as, you know, you smoke a cigarette, you feel sick. As soon as you stop feeling sick, you have another one. People were doing 20 a day anyway, 40, 20. We've all seen it. But if we could get half of the population to smoke, so he gets his psychoanalysis involved, gets a couple of other experts involved, and he works out that a cigarette is a symbol of male sexual power. It's symbolic of the penis. And if you could get women to smoke, you could tap into their inner desires that they could actually challenge male sexual power, therefore male power, and therefore their sense of freedom and liberty. All the things he worked out from these drives, from the unconscious. So what, after doing all this work and investigation, Edward Bernays, every year in New York there's an Easter Day parade. Edward Bernays gets a lot of girls together. Um, young women, sorry. You know what we call them, I don't know, 19, 20, 21. And he says to them, stash up a pack of cigarettes under your clothes. Rumour is a lot of them had them in their stocking tops, which is kind of symbolic as well. I mean, it's quite close to another area. <laughs> I'm talking like a five-year-old, it's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, because he was a press uh, agent when he worked in America before, I mean, he even went out to the Paris uh, Peace Conference with Woodrow Wilson. This is how this is how embedded into the elites Eddie Bernays was. So he's called on all his press people. He's, he said, "Listen, there's going to be suffragettes at the Easter Day Parade in New York. Now they're planning some kind of uh, some kind of protest." So all the press gets down there, they're all there with their cameras and they're, you know, waiting to write it up. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Edward Bernays is there and they, he's already arranged it with these women. When I give you a sign, get your cigarettes out and light one up. And if any press come to you and say, what, what are you, why are you doing this? 
Say, say a cigarette is a torch of freedom. And it's like, it's almost like the Empire State, uh, not the Empire State, the Statue of Liberty, sorry. Sorry, there's so many fallacies going on here. Like the Statue of Liberty, like a woman of, of liberty, of freedom, holding her cigarette, her torch of freedom. And all the newspapers reported on it. These women got their cigarettes out and people hadn't seen women smoking in public, certainly not en masse. And they were like, hey, could you take photos, women on the you know, newspapers, stories. And, oh, a hundred women today at the Easter Day Parade suddenly lit up cigarettes. They said they were torches of freedom and it was their, it was their, it, it was their, their liberty to, to be able to smoke. You know, why shouldn't they be able to? And even the phrase torch of freedom, it's like feminism. When you say, I'm not a feminist, what, you don't support women? Or, you know, it's like BLM. What, you don't support black people? It's like, no, that's not what I said. So when, when, if you don't support women smoking, what, you don't support women being free? No, it's not, no. <laughs> so it's quite clever. And sales of cigarettes went through the roof. So as crude as you might think, all that penis envy and, uh, and symbolic relationship between smoking and, and, and the penis and male sexuality, however, however crude you might think that is, and it was kind of in those early days of psychoanalysis, it still worked. So unless you can tell me another reason why, I'm sticking with that. Now here's, the, here's why I wanted to tell you all of that because there's a, one of the most in, incredible ironies ever. Earlier on, let me just get this in, earlier on I said that Eddie Bernays was one of the most important people, possibly in history, because he invented consumerism. He, he invented it. He, he realised you could get people to buy things, not because they needed them, which in, you know, early 20th century America, was that that was for rich people rich people bought things they didn't need they bought luxuries but poor people couldn't afford luxuries they only bought what they needed but edward bernays convinced people to buy things they didn't need not based on rational or critical thinking but based on irrational desires and drives and that's what started the consumer culture we know only too well today but that's not even the best bit. Stroke worst bit. <laughs> it was the best of propaganda. It was the worst of propaganda. Here's the, here's the, the sweetest, most equally sour irony of all time. When Edward Bernays got back to America and realised that he could use propaganda to make money, to sell things, he realised it probably wasn't a good idea to call it propaganda because propaganda was associated with war, was associated with deception. So he had to call it something else. And he called it, and he was the first person to call it this. He invented this, and you all know it. It's one of the biggest secrets everyone knows. Public relations. PR. Everyone knows about PR. If you've got a business, you get a PR company involved. Eddie Bernays, Eddie, Bern <laughs> Eddie Mayonnaise, Edward Bernays renamed propaganda public relations and invented consumerism. Ta-da!